Well, staying on port, so uh, Dersma has requested a trade to the Bombers. Yeah. So, is it's that going to work? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one because um, he uses a name that's always kind of been raised as a, you know, if Port don't have the draft capital. Yeah. Who do you look at? And you look at Victorians and it was him and Ollie Wines that are being raised um, pretty much every time when Port get to a bit of a standstill in negotiations. So, and they've kind of said that Ollie Wines will be there next year. So, you can probably put a line through him. And, and the com- the conversations around Dersma or the, the, what was being said from Chris Davies this week and last week around Dersma was a bit more open, a bit more, you know, if a player doesn't want to be at the club or want, is happy to explore their options and the club won't get in their way. So, and that's what's happened here. So, he's officially requested a move to Essendon and yeah, I think a lot of people think it's probably not what they need, the Bombers, and this is just a kind of piece that will help satisfy a deal with Brandon Zirk Thatcher going the other way and maybe that is all it is. But I'd like to think that there might have been a plan in place for if they were to get rid of, rid of Dylan Shield and, and move him to St Kilda, which, again, um, doesn't look like it actually might happen. But there was mm-hmm. a, potentially a plan there where you move Nick Martin into the midfield, inside midfield. That's kind of something that they've talked about or, or looked at um, over the last 12 or so months about you know, moving him in from the wing and half forward as an inside ball winner. And then you've got Sam Durham and Dersmer on the wings there. Like mm-hmm. they've, they've, like Martin and Durham are, I think, arguably the best wing pair. I'm just trying to quick, quickly think, but very, very good young emerging wing pair. Um, but yeah, Martin has said before as well that he's keen to kind of move into the middle. So mm-hmm. that would aid that. And when you've got Shield moving out of that engine room um, and Martin moving in, I think that's kind of a nice little change there. And then Jay Gresham kind of holding a, a half forward role um, once he makes his move there. So that, that's probably why I didn't mind. The, I don't mind the, the Dersma move, but if it was hinging on Shield leaving, then they're, maybe they're still, now they're going back to having you know, one too many um, in that midfield group. They've already got plenty coming through. You know, Perkins, Hobbs, and Sardis they've picked up over the last three years with first round picks uh, and on top of Merritt and Parrish and a few others in there under Brad Scott. So they've got more than enough options in midfield um, and now it's just a matter of finding out who fits where. But it's good competition, uh, competition yeah. and selection to I have. I still feel like you take Dersmer if you can get him anyway, right? Like, well, yeah. Well, he's had a bit of a down year th- this year. He's injured, but... Um, yeah, but there's, there's, there's upside there. And I think that's kind of with all of these guys that Essendon are looking at, maybe Bart Goldstein, is that there is upside. But it, we spoke about this probably a fortnight ago. It can, re- it can re- easily go the other way. Mm. If they can get the best out of these guys, that's... That's going to be fantastic for them and it will have an immediate impact. But at the same time, you've got Ben McKay on a six-year deal who many think you know, still probably isn't one that you'd be putting to a, to a contract like that. Gresham similar. I think many thought by now he'd be playing like he was three, four years ago as one of the better smaller framed forwards. Um, and Dersman, yeah, still has some upside. You know, He's only drafted a couple of years ago. Um, so, yeah, it would be interesting to see how each of them perform. But, yeah, mm-hmm. they, they bring Dozmer in for Brandon Zirk Thatcher, who, you know, they conceded is on the way out. And yeah. At best, might have got a pick 25, pick 30 range for him. So, I think they might have to package something along with Zirk Thatcher to get Dozmer, given he's probably even great, more well rated and, and he's contracted. So, it's going to be interesting to see how it, all those negotiations play out over the next week. Yeah, it will be interesting. So, if he goes there, I think one of my criticisms of Essendon in general has been they haven't gotten the best out of um, their midfielders. Like, you know, Parish Merritt, um, they're all, they're great players, but I just, I just, they haven't really blown the competition away. Yeah. So, I think compared to other mids. And it's kind of maybe it's it is it's it could be you know part of the system. I, I really rate Zach Merritt. I think Parrish has a lot to offer, and those two kind of complement each other quite well. Like Merritt's last two to three seasons has been solid, but maybe it is support. Like Parrish's twenty twenty one season was stellar. Twenty twenty two maybe fell off a little bit, and then mm. this year I think he came back as one of the best clearance players. But they both have knocks on them, whether it's disposal use or you know overall impact and, and game winning yeah. ability. But I don't think like not every midfield has to be a game winner. Yeah, I think they've kind of got these good pieces and maybe they can find something in a Archie Perkins or an Elijah Sardis as that third piece. Um, but they've got more than enough midfielders to that they should be well well placed for a finals run next year or the year after. Yeah, almost coming like the doggies where they had um, too many midfielders yeah. and they had to move some on. So, right, so we're going to move